Fantastic. Good morning, everyone. Would you like to find your Bibles together and uh, have... Let me just switch on the PowerPoint. And is there a remote control somewhere as well? That's brilliant. Very excited about what God's going to do through um, the building project as we come to October time. So excited. Keep praying about that. Please do pray for the money coming in. Today we're looking at the, 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 a passage of scripture where Jesus talks about binding and loosing. Everyone say binding and loosing. Yeah, very good. You, you, you're, you're very obedient this morning. I love, I love that. We're going to read. It's all part of the, the theme. Uh, obedience and you following uh, con- uh, kind of responses is really good. So uh, M- Matthew chapter 16, 13 to 20. Okay, on your marks, you can say, go, find that passage. Find that passage. Who's going to be the first person to find that passage? When you've found that passage, stick your hand up in the air. Whoa. Was it you, Claire? You had it ages ago. Fantastic, you win the prize, fantastic. Everyone close their Bibles, everyone close their Bibles, close their Bibles, so shut. Hold your Bibles up in the air. No, not with your fingers in the middle. Hold the spine, yeah, hold the spine, so it's closed, so it's closed. Scott, you're cheating. Okay, on on your marks, get set, go, find that passage, find that passage. I want to see who finds that passage first. Scott, was that you? That was definitely cheating. Claire, you're definitely cheating as well. Okay, well, you can't get two. There you go, Mrs. Rolfe. There you go. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, what we're going to do, Claire, I love you. You didn't cheat. I'm sorry I called you cheat then. That was wrong. You're just a wonderfully fast person. That's just amazing. Here, here's the passage. Have you got the passage? Matthew is in the New Testament for those who are still looking for it. Three quarters of the way through the Bible, you find it, and it says... This. Now, what I want us to do is to all read this out together, but we're going to do it differently. We're going to, this side is going to read verse 13, and then we're going to go to verse 14 over here, then verse 15, and you, and then you're going to read. Do you understand? Okay. Okay, going to read it together after three. One, two, three. When, when Jesus, Jesus came to the reason of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his apprentices, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you do on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Fantastic. This is the word of the Lord. Fantastic. Jesus says two things in this passage, and they're on the two screens. The first screen is really about who do you say I am? That was one of the first things. He wanted his apprentices. He wanted to check out, what are you thinking at the moment? What are people saying? Who do you say that I am? And the second one, the second bit of the story is who are we and what responsibility do we have after, uh, as, alongside Jesus. So who is Jesus and therefore who are we? Those are the two things we're going to look at together. Okay, anyone played this game before? Simon Says, yeah? When was the last time you played Simon Says? Uh, Quinn, when, when was the last time you played Simon Says? How old were you? Oh, it, relatively, you, you, you work in a school, I, I imagine you probably played it last week. Yeah, you probably play it on a holiday, don't you? You probably do it all the time, Gwen, actually. Sorry, when was the last time you, you played Simon Says? Two years ago. Gosh, that's remarkable. In church. Ah, okay, well, fantastic. Okay, well, Simon Says, stand up. Stand up. 
Fantastic. Now, you know how this game works, yeah? You, you understand how this goes? Do you remember this game? So basically, when Simon says, si says do something, you do it. And when Simon says, uh, when you don't say Simon, when Simon doesn't say anything, we just, I say something, uh, it uh, doesn't count for anything and you don't do it. So when Simon says, put your right hand in the air, you put your right hand in the air. And when Simon says, put your left hand in the air, you put your left hand in the air. When Simon says, go to a clapping position, you go to a clapping position. Clap once. Oh, no. Simon says, Simon says, clap once. We all clap. Simon says, clap twice. That's very good. You're, you're getting it. OK. And, and just shake it out. Just shake it out. Ah, OK, 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 OK. So now this is for real. OK, what I want you to do, if you don't like this game, all you have to do is fail and sit down. <laughs> But the winner of this will get an amazing prize. So if you want to be in this. So Simon says, stand up. Simon says, wave your hands in the air. Put your hands down. Oh. If you want to keep playing, just count how many mistakes you make in your head. OK. Simon says, put your hands down. Put your right hand up. Oh. Simon says, put your right hand up. Simon says, put your left hand up. Simon says, wave your hands. Stop waving your hands. Simon says, stop waving your hands. Put your hands down. Oh. Simon says, put your hands down. Simon says, get to a clapping position. Simon says, clap. Very good. Simon says, clap twice. Simon says, clap. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Stop. Simon says, stop. Simon says, say to the person next to you, I love you. <laughs> yeah, that's so great. I love the fact you've just done that. I love that. <laughs> Simon says, go back to the clapping position. Clap once. Oh, who did that? Who did that? Yes, yeah, sit down. Simon says, clap twice. Clap thrice. Thrice? Where did that come from? <laughs> no one knows what thrice means. Clap three times. Oh... Just shake it out, just shake it out. OK, everyone sit down. No, go on, everyone sit down. No, honestly, I mean, everyone sit down. Ah, uh, you're good, you're good. All right, sit down. Oh, you're good, someone says sit down. Fantastic. Well, I haven't got enough for all of you to have it, so you can help yourself to a donut afterwards. But, but I just want to give one to lovely Heidi, who was just so, so brilliant. Simon says, well done. Simon says, give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah, fantastic. Now, I just want to say thank you so much for playing that game. I know that for some of you, you're thinking, I hate coming to church when it's like this. Uh, you know, why, why can't it be a bit more normal than this? But uh, I just want to really appreciate you for doing that. Um, Jesus says, who am I? He, he was saying, what authority do I have to speak? Who, who are people saying that I am? Do I have any authority in people's minds? What are they thinking about me? Uh, when I said Simon says, you did it. When the, I didn't have Simon's name, you didn't do it. There was something about the word name Simon. I, I wonder whether there's a link here to Simon Peter. I don't know whether that was intended. Um, but um, you know, there's something about authority. Who did Jesus? Jesus was inquiring with his apprentices. He was going, what have you learned about me? And so they came out with some answers. And here are the... Here, well, Jesus says an interesting thing to start with. Did you notice it? He said, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Isn't that interesting that he who was above all things, who made heaven and earth, who came down from heaven, who was the son of the living God, he's, he called himself son of man. I love his humility. Don't you think? I mean, he could have said, who do, you, who do they think? You know, he could have talked constantly about his godness, but instead he talked about his normalness, his humanity, his fleshness. Who do, who do people? It's another example of Jesus showing us how to live. Don't think of yourself as great. Think of yourself as small. Think of yourself as someone who gives yourself away. Who, he's a humble man. He says, who do they say this man is, this man of flesh? And, and they say, well, some people say you're a dead prophet. Come back to life. And they name a few dead prophets. And uh, it was great that they had a few on their list. You know, Elijah, Jeremiah. Some say John the Baptist, who had just died just recently. And Jesus says, well... Dead prophet coming back to life. What about you? Who, who do you say that I am? 
And Peter is first off the mark. Don't we love? Well, Simon is first off the mark. Simon says, Simon says, you are the son of the living God. You're not a dead prophet come to life. You are the son of the living God who's always alive. In fact, you are the Messiah, which we know means king. It means the one in charge who's going to rescue and redeem his people. You're the one God's chosen to bring everything back together again. And Jesus says to Simon, he says, that is fantastic, Simon. You've understood that because the Holy Spirit helped you understand and see with eyes that a lot of people couldn't see. Okay, and then Jesus goes on and tells this rather other extra teaching alongside just having worked out who he was. He does this extra teaching about what you might call binding or we might call binding and loosing. And uh, it's a bit of a, one, a scratch ahead of a thing. It's one of those where you're going to go, well, I'm not quite sure what this is about. What is he talking about? And to be honest, there's lots of Christian ideas about what Jesus is talking about. So you have to discern, and I'm going to give you my version of what I think, having read some stuff about what this might be about and weighed the pros and the cons between them. You may disagree with me. You may think it's about something else. We can debate that later. Because I'm not exactly sure what the binding and loosing thing is, but this is my best effort at trying to work it out. Uh, this is my lovely puppy. Anyone know his name? Ezra. Ezra, fantastic. Ezra means helper. Yesterday he was helping me screw things into the wall. He helps me mop. Uh, as, I, as I mop up his wee that he's just done, he helps me follow the mop. He loves the mop head and the brush head. So he's, very, he's lovely, fantastic. And I do quite a lot of binding and loosing with Ezra. This is him having a cup of tea in the garden the other day, uh, which he really enjoyed. Uh, really fantastic. And this is a new bathtub that I made in. Some of you have already seen this on Facebook. Uh, I, I got an old plasterer's tub, and I've used an old kitchen table that I've messed about with and put it all together again, and this is going to be his bath. He's, he doesn't look too happy there, does he? He looks like, I know what's coming. You know, like, <laughs> I'm not really sure about this. But uh, So I want him to learn. I want him to express himself. I want him to play. I love my puppy, and you've seen him, haven't you, Heidi? You came and saw him, and, and he, what was he like, Heidi? Yeah, he was all jumpy, wasn't he? He was all jumpy, and, and I put a little rein on him in order to stop him jumping, didn't I? I put a lead on him in order to just calm him down a bit. And You know, once we took his teeth off Austin's arm, it was okay, you know, we just kind of separated. So we do a bit... A binding and loosing with our puppies. Uh, I'm not sure that he's too keen on his lead. He's trying to hide it here. I think he's just going to say, I'd, I'd rather be free. Binding and loosing is part of our lives. Uh, do you remember riding a bike when you were kids? Do you remember that feeling of freedom you get with a bike when you first have a bike? It's Joel's brought his bike to, uh, to school today. Um, oh, it's church, isn't it? It's church. And uh, it's fab, isn't it? Having a bike for the first time. You know, it's just great. And I remember um, when I was about 11, maybe a bit younger, maybe eight or nine, uh, I, was, um, I went around the corner further than I'd ever gone before. You know that feeling of where you go like beyond the bit that you've known? You, there's the, the little bit around your close or where you live. And then you go to the next road up or the bit down the cycle path around the corner and you go to a bit where you've never been before without your mum or your dad. And you go with your friend. It's really exciting, isn't it? You, get, you think you've left home, don't you? You feel like you, you need a packed lunch. and you, you know, you, What happens if I go hungry? You know, I'm miles away from home. Anyway, so I went with my mate around the corner. And we, we found this other little place which had a gravel, um, gravel path. And uh, it was fantastic for doing skids on it. We just discovered that we could do skids. So we were coming around. We kept playing this skids thing. So I went off cycling around. And uh, we did this skids thing. And... Um, it was really good until I skidded one too many times and I came off and I fell off my... Oh, Joel's moved. That's very good. <laughs> That's very good. And I came off. And as I came off, I, uh, I used my brakes, but my brakes uh, didn't use them properly. And I came off and I, my face... I didn't, didn't wear helmets in those days, did we? Do you remember that, Tony, where you didn't wear a helmet? Helmet. Uh, and I came off, I banged my head on the ground, and I took off my eyebrow on the ground, on the gravel, and I was really worried. Uh, not so much about my eyebrow, although that, the blood was trickling down my face, but more about what my mum was going to say when I got home. 
Do you remember that feeling? And of course, when I got home, my mum said, oh, my boy, what's happened to you? And she wiped my face and she put a plaster over my eye and I went to the doctors and they gave me some sticky things to put over my, uh, some stitches. Thank you for that. Now, hands up if you ever thought you'd see a vicar cycle around the church. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some things are appropriate in a communion service and other things are not appropriate. There are some rules and boundaries, and I'm not sure if I've just crossed a rule and a boundary. We're talking about binding and loosing. The brakes are good for stopping us, and sometimes they're really helpful for us, and other times they're not so good for us. Binding can be good, binding can be bad, loosing can be good, loosing can be bad. What about this one? Uh, this is a picture of uh, our camper van on holiday. This is the Black Forest. We went up the mountains, beautiful view at the top of the mountain, fantastic. And then we had to come down the mountain, uh, down, uh, we were heading off uh, back up to France. And uh, I was putting my foot on the brake and nothing was happening. I mean, like, it was like, like one of those films, you know, where they cut the brake cable thing and nothing was happening and, and uh, I was praying quite a lot. And uh, we did a- actually come to a, a stop uh, uh, in a village and uh, thankfully we came to a stop. The, the hill road just went up enough for it to, to come to a standstill. And uh, we had to work out what was wrong with our brakes. So I took it to, eventually we took it to a garage. And here's the, the garage we found ourselves in in France. What a fantastic garage this was. It was a back street garage in France. And uh, look at the cars that they had. They had a, a fantastic Citroen DS, is it? A Citroen DS. And uh, I don't know what the white one is, but it's stunning, isn't it? It's great. I don't know what it is. Uh, and then you can see my camper van right in the corner. And uh, it's up on its wheels. And it, it was having its brakes taken apart because... You really want the brakes to work so that they work when they work and they don't work when they don't work. You, know, you need them to work. Brakes are important. And here's another thing about binding and loosing. Have you ever been on a motorway when, when the traffic signs change in, in order to keep the flow of traffic going? So there's a kind of restriction of your speed in order to keep everything moving slowly. There's a bit of binding so that there's loosening at the same sort of time. It's kind of interesting combination of things. And we know that when the sign changes, we need to change our behavior to accommodate this change. Yeah, binding and loosing. I wonder if these images, these stories, kind of help us to work out what Jesus means when he did his own version of binding and loosening. When a king has a kingdom, a king is responsible for binding and loosening things in his kingdom. The king is responsible for saying, these are the boundaries, these are the parameters, these are the edges... And if you go beyond these, you're outside of my kingdom. But if you remain within these boundaries, you're inside my my kingdom. That makes sense. Jesus is pronouncing himself as a king, the Messiah. And and Simon has said, oh, you're the Messiah. You're the one who's going to bring order and authority to everything and put things back together again. And, and, And Jesus says to Peter, he says, yes. Now, have you noticed that Jesus does quite a bit of binding and loosing in his teaching? There are some laws that he loosens up, and there are some laws that he tightens up. So here's an example of a law that he tightens up. You have heard it said, fantastic, Joel didn't know that I was going to say this, but he read it out at the beginning. You have heard it said, love your neighbor. I say, tightens it up, I say, love your enemy. This is the fulfillment of the law. So it tightens up some laws. And there are other laws that he seems to loosen a bit. So he goes around teaching and healing on the Sabbath, which seems to break the laws, and it's a kind of opening up of the laws to bring life. There's a bit of loose, loosing, loosening going on. Do you notice that? And it's as if I think that Jesus is saying, just as I do binding and loosing, loosening, I want you, Peter, to do the same thing. Now, we, we have, some of you will have walked past the steps just down the bottom. You'll see the coping stones that have been taken. You know, these are the stones. You know, so, I don't, uh, Lawrence will be able to tell us exactly how long it would take a mason to carve a beautiful piece of stone and take something. How long would it take? A day, day and a half. A day, a day and a half. And so there are one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven of those. A couple of weeks, yeah, once you've done everything. So you imagine it's going to cost nuts, and then the materials of the stone itself. I don't know how much stone. I don't know now, but it used to be 
say £100 a cubic foot? don't know what he's talking about now, right now. But, uh... <laughs> a foot by a foot by a foot. Oh, OK, that, that's making sense, yeah. Probably more than that. So maybe, uh, maybe up to £1,000 for the materials and then a week's work, two weeks' works, maybe a couple of thousand pounds, three thousand pounds, just gone in a day. Whew. Oof, straight off. That's so wrong, isn't it? Just taking someone else's stuff. We all know the rule, do not steal, don't we? We all know that rule. What about this one? Is it wrong to keep what you find? Of course it is, says Ian. What should you do, Ian? Yeah, that's right. So if you're in the shop, you take it to the shop, the counter, or if you're... And if it's on the pavement outside, what do you do with the wallet? What do you do with the wallet? You take the wallet into the shop and you put the fiver in your back pocket. Isn't that right? <laughs> no. Okay, that's wrong. You have a sense that that's wrong, isn't it? Tori was telling me, well, Tori's mum was telling me a little while back that when she was eight, she went swimming in the river down in Bath. She went river swimming in, when she was a kid. She went swimming in the river and she left her bathing costume on the side of the riverbank and she came home and her mum said, well, where's your bathing costume? I've got to put it in the wash. And she said, oh, no, I've, lo I've lost it. And her mum said, well, you're going to have to go to the police station and find out you know, see if anyone's brought it back. She, I won't buy you another one because that, we haven't got enough money, so you have to go to the police station. So every week, every Saturday, she went down to the police station. Can you imagine this little eight, nine-year-old child going to the police station? Hello, I've lost my swimming costume. Can you check in lost property to see if anyone's brought it in? Can you imagine those days? Isn't that a beautiful image? You'd think... That was the end of the story, except for the end of the story is that one day the policeman at the other side of the counter on Saturday mornings thought, I've had enough. I'm going to really look this time. <laughs> this kid comes back every week. I'm going to really look. And he really looked and he said, is this yours? And he held up this little bathing costume. She said, yeah, that's the one. And, he, and she took it home. He said, Mom, isn't that great? Somebody took it in, which is great. What happens if you find an anonymous £10 note? On the side, on the floor. Stealing or not stealing? Hands up for stealing, if you keep it. Hands up for not stealing. Hands up if you don't want to make a decision right now, but you want your person that you're walking with to put it in their pocket so that it's not there, it's not your fault. Yes. You were in a shop. And I picked up a £10 note that was on the floor. Yeah. And I looked at and I asked anybody if they lost any money, they said no. And I kept asking, they still said no, so I kept it. And I put it in for charity. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. So she kept asking, everyone said no, which was honest of them as well, because they could have said yes. <laughs> and they said no. And then she, uh, she kept it, but then she gave it to charity. That's a really good round of applause to Brenda. I like that. Yes, I like that. Uh, what I like about this image is that there's little people on either side trying to take this £10 note home, and the £10 note seems to be ripping in half. I quite like that. But it, it, even, it's really tricky, isn't it? If, if something's uh, yeah, it's quite tempting to keep it for ourselves. Okay, what about this, tax returns? Like uh, receiving something in payment in cash and not putting it on your tax return or getting gifts given to you and not putting that on your tax return, or some kind of stealing or not stealing? Stealing. Straight, straight up at the front here, stealing. How's everyone else feeling? <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? No, okay, so we're feeling the pinch of these things. It's, you know, being absolutely true to Jesus. We know the rules do not steal, but when it comes right up close to us, oh... We're finding the pinch of this rule. What about when you're at work and you think, oh yeah, um, I'd really like to check Facebook right now. You're at work and you check a little bit of Facebook to find out how your friend's baby is doing. Stealing or not stealing? Stealing. Every time. What about the sports page at work? Stealing. Oh, flipping it. You're tough. You are. 
I hope when I get to heaven, God's going to be a bit nicer to me. Flipping heck, yeah. Hard court, yeah. Okay, so all of that stuff, stealing. So you're, you're at work and you're having a chat over the photocopy and you think, oh, it's not really work, but I'm really interested in this chat right now. Stealing or not stealing? Interesting, isn't it? So there's these rules that we're trying to work out. Jesus said to Peter, he said, I will build my church, but I'd like you to do something. I will, build, I will create a community of people who get together, but I want you to do something. I want you to do some binding and loosening. I wonder whether he was saying to Peter, do the same kind of thing that I've been teaching, teaching to do, is it, to make decisions together to work out what's right and what's wrong. Where is there scope for flexibility and where do you have to bring things tighter together? What would it be like if your small group got into a bit of binding and loosing together? You had a chat about what to do on Sunday. What's appropriate to do on a Sunday when you're supposed to be having a rest? How much of a rest is a rest? How about you had a chat in your small group? Oh, what about with your tax collect- in tax stuff? You all had a chat about your tax, your money. And you shared, is it okay to claim this or not okay? What do you think? And you shared it with the others. And someone else said, no, 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 that's okay for these reasons. And someone else said, no, actually, it's really important. I think it's really important. And you came to a common mind and shared your, that kind of thing. And you found some binding going on or some loosening. I wonder if that's what Jesus meant to Peter. Because Peter does quite a bit of that in his rest of church life. He tries to work out where are the boundaries. Is it good to eat or is it not good to eat some kind of food? How do we do our behaviour, our dressing? How do we come to church? What do we do with communion? How do we do all these things? Well, there's a a role for binding and sometimes for loosening. We're doing that same thing with the church right now. Have you noticed? We're doing some loosening up of the building, creating some, and we've had to discern that together. That seems, and, and Jesus says, whatever is loosened on earth, because you're my king's apprentices, because I'm going to back you. When you loosen things on earth, it will be loosened in heaven. When you bind things on earth. There's some sense that it's not that we're going to control God, but we're going to, he, he's going to back us with this binding up of things as well. So I wonder whether we could take this thing seriously together and we could be a better kind of church where we actually take responsibility with each other for each other's ideas about what is right and wrong. Rather than hiding ourselves away, we could do this together. Binding or loosening? A bit of binding going on right now. <laughs> Okay, so just like Jesus said, he said, you are my apprentices, so follow me. Do as I do. Like me, so you. Should we pray? Father God, would you help us? Would you help us to become more like Jesus, who knows the difference between good things and bad things? Would you help us to know when we need to open things up and relax a bit? And would you help us to know when we need to bring things down and close things down and tidy things up a bit? and put things away and create some boundaries? Would you help us around our ethics together to know what is right and what is wrong? Whether it's about our money or about our language or about how we think, things we do. Would you help us to grow into your likeness? Whether we're tiny, tiny or whether we're old, old. Would you help us to grow into Jesus? And would you help us to become the kind of community who could talk about all these things together? without falling out. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.